Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. I definitely wanted someone who was both financially stable and career driven, you know, obviously. Um, emotional, maturity and stability as well, effectively can communicate, handles conflict well. And then I said, I want someone who is tall, dark, and handsome, with a beard and hair. Every season of Married First Sight seems to have at least one villain. And I get it, let's be honest, sometimes it's fun to turn on the TV and watch someone you love to hate. Don't act like it's just me. Season 13 seems to be painting Mirla as one of its villains due to her lifestyle and spending habits. I admit, at first I was on board. Producers were making it seem as though she is someone who likes designer clothes, extravagant vacations, and lives a lavish life. But even though they didn't say it, they were given the impression that she was living beyond her means, as if she had a ton of debt. But now that we are a few episodes in, I kind of understand her and see where she's coming from. When Mirla and Gil were disclosing their finances with each other, she said she doesn't shop every month, nor does she carry debt. Plus, it sounds like she has a nice savings account. So when it comes to finances, she's basically someone who makes good money and chooses to splurge on things she enjoys from time to time. I don't see the problem. Married or single, going to work every day and having nothing to show for it should not be the goal. I pray that all of our careers put us in a position to indulge in things we love. When it comes to people repeatedly asking her if she will scale down her lifestyle now that she's married, I understand why she says no. She's worked hard to afford to live in a good neighborhood in a place she considers to be nice. Why should she be expected to go backwards and lower her standards because Gil may not be able to afford it? By the way, I have some videos coming up with some juicy tea, so make sure you take a second to subscribe. Subscribing is free, but missing out on the tea may cost ya. I haven't heard her say that she expects to quit her job and for Gil to provide her with the finer things, nor have I heard her say that she won't pay more than 50% towards their bills. This feels like a double standard to me. If the roles were reversed, Gil preferred the finer things in life, had designer clothes, lived in a nice place, and wanted his wife to join him on luxury vacations, but Mirla had a modest income and lived a simple life, how crazy would it look if her friend stepped to Gil asking him to scale back on his spending and his dreams and aspirations for he and his wife? I'm sure many of us would be saying that her friends need to stop hating and mind their own damn business. And let's be real, from what I've seen so far, Mirla's life isn't all that extravagant. Looks like she rents an apartment, she doesn't own a mansion. Her everyday wardrobe isn't all designer. I'm not hating, I'm making the point that she seems to shop at places like The Gap and TJ Maxx as well. So it's not like everything she buys is designer and costs $1,000 or more. I know some of you might be thinking, yeah, but when you're married, you should at least discuss a large purchase before making it. True, but what's considered large is relative. To some couples, a large purchase might be $100, but to another couple, a large purchase might be $50,000 and everything in between. Just because her definition of large purchase may not line up with Gil's doesn't make her the bad guy. If Gil was paired with a Kardashian, would the expectation be the same? That she should conserve her spending, ask him before she buys a designer pair of shoes, and move into a one-bedroom apartment in a neighborhood that Gil can't afford? No, of course not. Mirla may not be at Kardashian level when it comes to money, but it's kind of the same difference. And let me make this clear. As of right now, I don't have anything against Gil. I'm against the notion that a woman who likes nice things and can afford them deserves to be questioned and made to feel badly about how she chooses to spoil herself with her own money. I blame Married at First Sight for this financial mismatch of a couple. The number one thing couples fight over is finances. So pairing a person who is extremely money motivated, who wants a lavish lifestyle with someone who is not money motivated, but prefers the simple life is setting them up to struggle. On an episode of Unfiltered, Gil was asked about Mirla's spending. He said she likes a nice lifestyle and he's cool with a simple one. However, that doesn't mean he's uncomfortable living a very lucrative life. 
He's willing to give his wife what she wants because it will make her happy. If she wants to live in a high rise, he says, and that's what's gonna make her happy, he's cool with it. So why does her shoe closet keep creeping into their conversations? I think it boils down to this. When a woman marries a man who makes less money than she does, should she be expected to tone down her lifestyle to match his? I say no.